Hello. Uh, I just had a fellow photographer send me some images that he was having problems with for a uh, 360 panorama he was uh, shooting. Now he's using the Sam Young 8mm, which is a rectilinear fisheye lens and not a Sigma circular fisheye lens. Now the difference between the two is between the circular fisheye and the rectilinear fisheye is how the image comes out on a crop sensor. The rectilinear, they say 180 degrees, but it's actually 180 degrees uh, diagonal from corner to corner. So basically the circle is finishing right here at these corners as opposed to a circular fisheye where it's 180 degrees from top to bottom and not corner to corner. So there's a little bit more image on the circular fisheye, which means less turns. Now, it's perfectly fine to have the rectilinear fisheye. You still can get the uh, 360 panorama. You just have to do a few more uh, photos, uh, one or two extra turns of the panoramic head to, to get the same thing. So. Um, now he's taken a number of photos, it's eight. You probably don't need to take eight. I think six is probably enough. Um, the problem is, are these two here that I noted is it's just too much information for PT GUI. That's the one we'll be using here. So, and with these, there's quite a lot of overlap on the side of the, if I can make this bigger. There's more than enough overlap actually on the side. Like here's this, the door on the side and here's the same door. If it's, it was a little bit closer here, well, you'll see what I mean. We could get more of the front and the back, which is uh, the slight problem with the way these were taken. So uh, I'm not gonna include these ones. That is the front and the back. It just actually is confusing PT GUI more than anything. So if I take these six images and bring them in, now, he has the top of the uh, church as well. You probably only need one straight up. You don't need two here. Now, there's no EXIF data because the Samyang, Samyang <laughs> 8 millimeter doesn't is sort of a manual lens, so it doesn't have any information. Basically, I'm just going to cancel this, and hopefully PT GUI will be able to figure this out just without doing any setup here. And which it has. So you can see there's the doors all lined up uh, on either side of the church. Now, everything is there, basically the ceiling, uh, except for this one little triangle is missing from the, the images here. Uh, so that's those would probably be covered in if they were a little less overlap on the sides of, uh, of the church here. Um, so basically, yeah, like, Four, five or six images would basically cover everything uh, on this. I'm just going to do the... This is a little clearer image of, of everything than the, the preview. So yeah, you can see there's just this triangle to fill in. Now, we do have that information on the front and the back of the church, but it's not going to work in PT GUI. It's just going to confuse it more with all that information. So these little triangles, luckily they're sort of a simple area, can be fixed in in uh, Photoshop or something that like that. Um, okay, so I'm just going to close that and create the panorama. I'll create a, a TIFF and create the panorama. Let's see, let's name it something else. Um, so at this point, basically done with PT GUI, it's done done its job for us to, to this point. And it's this one here, we're going to open it in Photoshop. Now, uh, I did do basically the same job already here. So this is the finished one. Basically we have the uh, 
I sort of bring in the the square, the 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 front and the back pan, the image that they they take that PT GUI doesn't really understand, and we only need really this floor part. So that's what I did. I just sort of cut out, uh, where is it? A little floor patch there. So we turn everything off. Just cut out of that first image there, just the floor that we need, and that way we can sort of use, you know, the editing with transforming, we can like scale, skew, warp, whatever kind of one you want to use here to get this, this uh, floor to match uh, the main one. I guess we have to turn that off first to sort of match underneath there. Um, I'm not going to actually transform it. Well, I guess I could, I could do scale if we zoom in here. You can kind of, you know, see where that triangle is happening. It's right here. And you get it to where you, you want it as best as possible there. And then you f finish it. Now this layer also, it was a little bit lighter, so I had to, you know, bring up the levels or bring down the levels. It was a bit dark. So I brought them down and you can see I also afterwards, just to make it blend in even better, is I take the eraser tool and I soften the edges of the original, the original panorama in certain areas there that it looks obvious there's a straight edge. I just take the eraser tool, bring down the opacity and the flow a little bit and make sure you're on a sort of a fuzzy brush there to, to like just sort of soften the edges a bit and so that when you do have the underlying one, those edges aren't as noticeable uh, as before. Sort of, if I go back, sort of see there's kind of a straight edge there if you just sort of blend it in a bit more, sort of disappears into the floor. Anyway, you kind of do that with both sides of this panorama. And then uh, the very bottom there, I just got rid of the the pano head by make sure I'm on the right layer there, selecting, usually this is your select tool. Well, there's one that's just a line, a single row, which I'll just put above here and I'll copy that and paste it so that it's on its own layer and edit it by transforming the scale of it. So that single line is taken one, a one pixel thick line of the floor there and basically I'm stretching it out over there. Now you, you could go in and completely, since it's a simple floor, just with the clone tool and, and clone the floor if you wanted. But uh, that's all I'm going to do for now. Um, oh, I didn't do the other the other side here, or did I? Oh, sorry. I, brought, <laughs> I did do the other side because this is the one I originally brought in. So that's this is the sort of finished pano. And that's it. Um, you know, save it as whatever you want. A TIFF or probably a JPEG if you're going to upload it to Google. Uh, rename it to something that makes sense. Like maybe your, your first one. And uh, quality, it's up to you. Probably around 10 is okay. And that's it. So that sort of fixes that problem with the using a uh, rectilinear fisheye as opposed to a circular fisheye. Basically, this for this particular image, just a little less overlap, and that triangle would have not have been an issue at all, actually. So here's the the finished image. Um, I recommend an, there's an app you can use, uh, Colorize, or I think it's bought by GoPro now, but they have a little tiny 360 uh, video player, which actually works for JPEGs as well. So you could take a look just to make sure everything is is fine there. So if you look around, you can see our floors were were patched. Uh, that's our little little circle at the bottom there that we stretched out. So it's not that noticeable uh, on the floor. But like I said, you could go in and fix that if you wanted. Um, so that's it. That's how you get a, a rectilinear lens in PT GUI. 
uh, works fine. Just uh, a little less overlap on the edges there and you can get that sort of triangle filled in. And probably just one view of the ceiling uh, would be enough as well. All right, hope you found that helpful.